Welcome to Indianomics. India's statistical system faces a crisis today. See, 88% of statistical data consumers. This, according to a study done by independent journalist Pramit Bhattacharya, who has just published a paper titled India's Statistical System, Past, Present and Future for the Kargi Endowment. This paper highlights many well-known problems with Indian statistics. The decadal census, which was due in 2021, not yet being conducted. Two, the increasing unreliability of, unreliability of key data sets, like the GDP itself, after doubts were raised about the corporate data that it uses from the MCA 21. Three, the government not publishing, very important, the Consumer Expenditure Survey of 2016. And why is it important? The CPI and the IIP series are dependent on it and they are becoming out of date. Now, Bhattacharya's paper points to several other uh, you know, systemic problems like one, the perceived lack of independence of the National Statistical Organization, the NSO, instances of the government wanting to control the data narrative, conflict between the MOSP, the Ministry of uh, Statistics and Program Implementation and various arms of the government hurting the quality and importance of statisticians at the central and the state level, lack of financial and human resources. I can go on. But Acharya recommends, one, the setting up of a new statistical reforms commission to lay down a new stat statistical architecture for the country, but more importantly, legal backing for the National Statistics Commission, which actually was meant to act as a regulator of all statistics and and I think this is important, probably a CAG-like structure in the center and the states for statistics department as well. To discuss the problems and the likely solutions to this statistical crisis, and I don't think that is an exaggeration, I have with me the author of the report itself, Pramit Bhattacharya, uh, also with me, former National Statistical Member and once its acting uh, chairman, Mr. P.C. Mohanan, and economist, Ratin Roy. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, well, uh, actually, let me start with you, uh, Dr. Mohanan, because you've been there, done that. Uh, Pramit's, you know, very concise paper in 35 pages telling us both the historical perspective and the problems that have gone wrong on several occasions. What would you pinpoint as the one or two or three key problems with our statistical system? Well, I would... Uh say that you know the statistical system started deteriorating from the 90s uh, that is when the entire ecosystem of the data collection data processing data dissemination all started changing but the system could not keep up with that instead of running to remain where they are they just pretended to run this is and prometheus very very correctly identified the issues the problems faced that because i don't go into the past but the problems have been very well identified. Now, after the 90s, we find a very drastic deterioration in two of the biggest arms of the statistical system, the National Sample Survey and also the CSO. Mm. And then we have non-statistical people interfering in most of the data collection exercise. And I would take a lot of blame from the by the official statistician like myself in this whole process because we could not keep up to date with the evolving ecosystem, especially uh, the changing in the architecture, which is what he has rightly pointed out. Mm. And the Rangarajan Commission, unfortunately, I would say, gave a large number of recommendations instead of giving a few very specific and concrete action points. It, it went into micro details of the system and suggested many things. And the government, as usual, went about and said we implemented most of them, but the key recommendation remained unimplemented. But, but the last 10 years, we have seen a real uh, problem in the system. One side, we have the deterioration of the existing ecosystem or the data collection system. Other side, the government uh, consciously trying to keep the system under control or trying to you know, uh, involved themselves in most of the statistical activities. You know, Dr. Mohanan, uh, Dr. Mm. Mohanan, I'm sorry to interrupt, I, but which yeah. do you think is the bigger problem? Is it the problem that the government is trying to control the narrative? Or, you know, you started by blaming yourself or people like yourself. Uh, is Are there problems, assuming the government narrative doesn't change, 
do you think things can still be set straight, that things went wrong even if the government had not interfered? No, I'm coming to that. Narrative is not the only fault. Okay. I mean, that is something which everybody tries to do. The Prometheus rightly identified there are structural issues in the way the system has evolved uh, during that time. And that cannot be, uh, bl I mean, you cannot put the whole blame on the narrative. Mm -hmm. The entire, uh, if you look at the statistical resources, that has not changed over several decades. Yeah. Except you have a top-heavy structure in the statistical cadre, but not much in the change in the, not much expansion in the bottom side. Okay. So the resources uh, in the system has not been commensurate with the expansion of the economy or the size of the population or anything like that. Okay. So it's not just the narrative alone that sure. will solve the problem. I, th I think that's very important, sir. I mean, uh, to put it up front over there, that yes, uh, the political authorities are responsible, but uh, the system has other non-political problems as well. And Pramit clearly points out recruitment at the lower level has also gone haywire uh, for a whole host of reasons. One doesn't even know how much money is being spent by various departments for collecting surveys. So maybe money is not even the problem. It's just being misspent. I'll come to that in a min minute with uh, uh, Pramit. Uh, but Ratin, as a big user of uh, statistical data, uh, do you think this can be set right only if it became a political agenda? Only if government backs it can we really change the mess. Well, when we say government, I think we are using too large a word. Okay. My depressing conclusion, and I'll give an anecdote in a minute, uh, using statistics in the policy domain in India over the last 10 or 15 years, is that it is the bureaucracy and the executive that is reluctant to see an improvement in statistics for the same old reason that bureaucracies are anywhere. Statistics get discipline, and bureaucrats don't like discipline. They prefer discretion. So let me give you an example. When I joined the Finance Commission as a chief economist back in 2009, I discovered that central and state governments produced their own versions of GSD, gross state domestic product. And the Planning Commission, produced a reconciled set just for the Finance Commission, oh. which they kept secret from the public until the Finance Commission report was published. Oh. For the very good reason that, because I was part of this, the way the GSDP numbers that were agreed between the uh, Planning Commission and the states was a political party. Mm. You would say, you know, second cutting agriculture should be take that, third cutting agriculture take this. It was better in some states, worse in some states. But in the end, the reconciliation was fundamentally political. Oh. And that is not unusual because statistics is political. However, one of the major reasons why you'd want to use statistics or even care about them would be if you wanted to do evidence-based planning and forecasting. As I said, I've been saying now for two or three years, the central government, the government of India is no longer in the business of evidence-based forecasting. Simple example. Let's ask anybody in the government of India, the Reserve Bank, what is the GDP of India going to be in 2027? Not $5 trillion economy and all that. Require no stats for that. That's a that's an expression. Or what is going to be the structure of the Indian economy in 2027? What is going to be the contribution of agriculture, of industry, of finance, of services? No one has a definitive answer, and no one is interested in a definitive answer. Mm. When that happens, then all that happens when statistics comes out is a bunch of froth, which is people say income has gone down, GDP has slowed down, GDP has increased. But there is no particular policy relevance to that ecosystem conversation, which is entirely normative to say, mm. government is good, government is bad. Okay. So when government is not interested in using statistics to plan and forecast properly, whether it's fiscal statistics, whether it's industrial statistics, whether it's GDP statistics, the statistical system is going to suffer. And the last stage of that, of course, has been the census, which I have a theory on, which I will not add. <laughs> but what does the government use the census for? Yes. What does it need it for? It has all the information it needs, encapsulated in Amrit Khan and $5 trillion economy. For the rest, uh, you know, uh, statistics is uh, only an inconvenience. Mm. And therefore, as the competence of government declines in doing economic statecraft, the ability to keep the statistical system robust is going to come down. It is okay. no coincidence. Okay. And Pramit brings this out so well <laughs> that well. despite the certain bureaucratic squabbles that took place between 1950 and, let's say, 1980, the government had a stake in the in the statistical system because it needed that information yes. to be able to plan forward. It does not now. And that is why a major reason the mm. system is a
No, I take your point, but I was, uh, I, I still think we should be sensitive to what uh, Dr. Mohanan is telling us, that political is a problem. It is not the only problem. And whether the house can be set in order, at least uh, to the extent possible, uh, you know, if... Yeah, but if I may, I was not saying political yeah, is I, the problem. Yeah. I'm saying I get technical point. is the problem. Yeah. But there are two sides to technical. No, I get your point. Yeah, I get your point the that user, government needs the statistics. Are not yeah. But the system is going to atrophy. That's right. Government needed statistics when it was a planned economy. It could, uh, it needed to invest less once we became a less planned economy. Uh, okay, Pramit, uh, now to the author of the report. I'm giving you the last chance because I summarized the report a little bit. Uh, but you tell me, you know, uh, where do you see the rot first? As uh, Dr. Mohanan says, can something be done even without too much of uh, uh, political help? Uh, so, I, I agree entirely with what, what the others said, that it's not entirely a political problem. But when it comes to the solution, uh, you know, the political be. leadership has to be a part of it, and not just at the central level, also at the state level. So far, most of the discussion we are having about center, and rightfully so. But uh, the evidence that I've collected suggests that things are far, far worse at the state level. And state governments, in most cases, are not very concerned about it, with a few exceptions. And one of the things I would like to highlight is the Madhya Pradesh uh, Statistical uh, Commission, sort of a Reforms Commission report, uh, which came out just a couple of years back, mm. headed by former IRS member Amitabh Kumlu. So if you just read that report, it lays down the, you know, even the lack of bare minimum, you know, computers at the uh, Directorate of Statistics, you know, a dedicated statistical officer at the district level. From the very bottom of the statistical edifice, there there is no one to even take a look at it. So I'm not saying MP, by just by issuing this report is on a statistical revolution of some kind. But just acknowledging that, even that requires political leadership. And this yeah. came because the CM himself felt that this was needed. And okay. I know some are involved in it, and I'm sure Dr. Bonner would also know. Yeah. Uh, so, so that is the first step. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, you say that even Kerala is making <coughs> initial steps. You yes. said two states, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that is yeah. where you are pinning your hopes that hopefully, uh, you know, some state governments will move. Uh, you know, yes. actually, we also saw Rajasthan appointing, uh, I think, uh, Arvind Mayaram and uh, somebody else, I think even uh, Dr. Govinda Rao, for in certain advisory positions. Uh, and of course, uh, Tamil Nadu has uh, had a finance minister who was extremely uh, well-versed in financial matters. Do you think this uh, revolution can come from the states, Pramit? Yes, so there is certainly much more interest in state capitals, uh, including Chennai, where uh, I'm based now, uh, than was the case, uh, say, even five years back. So that's a, that's a big positive that I would take away. The second thing is, even in the financial sector, more and more people are speaking up today compared to, say, 10 years ago. And uh, while that has led to some controversies and the statisticians... Uh, may sometimes feel that people are questioning us too much and so on. Overall, I see it as a positive trend because these this is an important pressure group. Even Delhi knows that they can't ignore. At least the financial markets are one community they care about, uh, even if not for genders. Uh, so that can act as a uh, sort of uh, important pressure group. And I do think that uh, the rest of us as citizens, as data consumers, who whoever wherever we are based i think we need some sort of a you know data users union uh, to sort of advance the agenda of transparency and accountability in the statistical system because see this political pressures deterioration of statistical system is not unique to the indian democracy okay. uk also had such an example uh, between 1980 and the early 2000s and after that there was change there was reforms they completely revamped the statistical system, set up a new statistical authority, and which partly influenced the Rangarathi Commission. But the difference there is there is a Royal Statistical Society in the UK mm. uh, comprising of statisticians, economists, and data users who kept on persistently asking the right questions, putting mm. pressure on the government. Mm. Without that kind of an outside pressure, uh, governments will just ignore this agenda because this is not something that is that is going to get votes. In. You know, uh, yeah. that's a very interesting point. Actually, two of these lobbies can get together if the financial markets and uh, professional statisticians Together, ask the same questions. Uh, maybe the pressure will be good enough uh, for the uh, government uh, to answer. Uh, and will foreign investors, if they increase in number and depth, 
uh, start questioning and ask for more data. Could that be a pressure group? Those questions after the break. We are back in a minute. Welcome back. We are discussing a paper on India's statistical system and the myriad problems with it and how to set it right, written by Pramit Bhattacharya for the Carnegie Endowment. Uh, I've been speaking with the author of the report, Pramit Bhattacharya, former Dep acting chairman of the National Statistics Commission, Dr. Mohanan, and uh, independent economist uh, of the Overseas Development Institute, uh, Ratan Roy. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for your patience. Well, uh, Dr. Mohanan, uh, you know, before I come to the pressure that may come from financial markets asking for cleaner data, I wanted to ask you, what about administrative data that's already available? Now we have GST. Uh, you know, which gives fairly micro level data and not just as macro as direct taxes would be. Do you think that can be harnessed uh, uh, in a way? Of course, we have to set the statistical system in order, but can that replace to some extent the lack of data? Well, GST is supposed, I mean, we expected GST provide a lot of answers to the, uh, especially when it comes to the services sector and other things. But so far, the GST data has not been in public. Uh, it has not been given access to the public. So and one I unit has been given, that, sir. One unit. A little, you know. The account Kerala aggregators. Bunda, the account aggregators yeah. were allowed to use GST, and I don't know whether they've actually been using it. But he, the in principle nod was given. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. So in Kerala, I've been you know, the GST department in Kerala. They've been quite uh, helpful, and they promised to help me because I am now looking after the Kerala State Statistical Commission. Oh. And everybody has a stake in this, especially because the GSTP is a, one of the key uh, indicators and the borrowing limit is set as the 3% of GSTP. So the accurate estimation of GSP, GSTP is in everybody's interest. Mm. And that is why the government has taken a lot of interest in that. We have been holding several meetings and workshops to look at how to improve the state income estimation. So there is the, there are alternative uh, sources of data, but these are not very transparent. Other than GS, uh, GST, the government has large number of administrative data. Most of them are coming out you know, in the form of dashboards. You, know, you, you open any ministry, you get a dashboard. And uh, these dashboards are just black boxes. You, know, you don't know what is inside the thing. And the, then the question comes of metadata. How do you link this data with the other data sets? Mm. Uh, it, that applies to GST also. Mm. Uh, GST has a registration. There's a, there's a number given to each of these units. How do you link these uh, registered uh, units to with another data set? Mm. Same applies to other administrative. All of them have their own different standards for uh, district courts, state courts, industry courts, registration numbers. So none of these administrative data are interlinked or they don't talk to each other. That is the biggest issue, mm. uh, apart from the access to the data. Even if they give access to the data, it would be a very Herculean task to bring them together and to find out what is what, and what extent they are complete. Now, we don't okay. even know how many, what percentage of units are registered for GST. Okay. Okay. No, that will not be difficult to find out if there is, a, you know, a mind put to it. It's just that it's anyway getting uh, collected. Uh, uh, Ratin, I wanted to ask you if external pressures can mount. Uh, you know, China plus one is one big reason why one hopes there will be more foreign involvement in uh, Indian economic development, either by of VCs and uh, private equity uh, or direct FDI or even a foreign portfolio. The pressure that we want clean data can come from outside, you think? I don't think so. And the example before us is China. China's statistical system is, high, is widely acknowledged to be less than perfect uh, and perhaps not even very good. And intentionally so. There's an inten intentionality where the Communist Party uh, sort of looks at Chinese data and uses it in ways that perhaps foreign investors will not find congenial. They've been okay with that. Uh, they, similarly, in India, they do foreign admit investors are not interested. <laughs> They've admitted that well, their GDP is very low. I mean, is it still considered doctored? They have admitted it's 3% or 2% or even negative. Yes, yeah, still. Look, it's been, there have been controversies about Chinese data for many years. Of course. And it's okay. I, I'm just responding to the point about foreign investors. Foreign investors don't care about how good or bad your data is. They want to make some money. So if I'm able to sell them and their clients, for example, AMC companies or private equity firms here, I've been telling them for some time that the India story may be broken, but your story is bright. Mm. What data do I need to use for that? I need to show them that the government is broke and therefore if it is competent, 
it will disinvest in large measure. There'll be some good deals to pick up there. And then they want to know how listed companies will be able to increase profits. That is the narrow universe of data they're interested in. And that is the narrow universe of high frequency data and really data they're interested in. Okay. Okay. So they're not going to be sort of looking for data that is very important for public policy purposes, mm. but not, not necessarily for investor purposes. Okay. In short, there has to be a constituency mm. that is willing to engage with complexity. Mm. And foreign investors are not interested in complexity. complexity. Okay. The tragedy in India is that our policymakers too have now become disinterested in complexity. Okay. And if you're not interested in addressing complexity, you're not going to be interested in good data. Okay. One hopes uh, uh, the educated class, the universities, researchers uh, will be able to throw up some uh, opposition or some interest in this. Uh, Pravit, uh, let me try and fit in two questions here. One, you know, it's not just GST and we are throwing up a large amount of digital data. I mean, there's uh, lending, payment systems, NPCILs, I mean, uh, UPI, a whole host of data footprint is available. Uh, do you think we can perhaps leapfrog and improve uh, data by other means of collecting it? So I wouldn't want us to frame this as either this or this. Both of this have to go together, and that's what all countries have done. If you look at the U.S. Census Bureau, they do hundred more than 100 surveys every year, including many business surveys. The reason is very simple. You get standard data from administrative sources, which are designed with regulatory, regulatory intentions in mind, with bureaucratic intentions in mind. And there is a certain level of respondent burden you can put on firms across the economy. If you want more detailed data or very specific kind of granular sort of information, it is not advisable to put that field in an administrative form. Rather, you do a survey and figure that out. Secondly, in a country with a large informal sector like India, you will always have to rely on surveys for that part of the economy. It's basically outside the formal net. Thirdly, even once you get this together, how you do it is very important. Mm. See, even MCA 21 was a step forward when it came to integrating an administrative data set into the national accounts. Yeah. But in the process of doing it, you moved from an establishment uh, database to an enterprise level database without knowing how they map each other. Oh, you yes. couldn't figure out how to allocate it across sectors, across states. You then had to fall back on ASI, which is your legacy data, without having a link between ASI and MC. Mm. And just finally, uh, Maharashtra uh, government uh, uh, state statistical bureau, which is one of the better bureaus in the country, they had initiated a pro project and have a detailed project plan of integrating data from seven different mm. ministries, mm. including GST, including the uh, uh, Consumer Affairs Ministry, because the Shops and Establishments Act come there. And one of the, my sources told me that this covered almost 80% of at least the urban enterprise in Maharashtra. It would have been a rich database. And it took them months and months of negotiation between different departments to just get this started. And then the government changed. So this again oh. got delayed. And even after it is set up for the data to flow, to sort of get all these things evened out and to find out a common sort of sharing this thing, it it, it, it is it requires resources and time and continuous monitoring so that okay. even when regu regulations change. So you need a <laughs> yeah. dedicated sort of... Uh, yeah, I get you. Know, Pramit, I know you've put your heart and soul into it and you have a lot to say. Unfortunately, out of time. Uh, Mr. Mohan, in just 10 seconds, sir, uh, you know, do you think that uh, because the government is now back in industrial policy mode all over the world, actually, including ours, I mean, PLI and all our proactive government policy uh, making, do you think they could get interested in clean data? Yes, I have no other view other than that, you know, government will be interested. This cannot continue. As okay. Pramit rightly says, okay. we cannot allow this to continue. A decoding has been done. New codes are to be written. Now, that new code somebody has to write now. And I'm sure government will okay. make efforts, if not yeah. today, tomorrow. If I'm not mistaken, in London, in England, in the United Kingdom, the uh, chief statistician has the same uh, autonomy and independence yeah. as the CAG, uh, one of the, uh, you know, constitutionally protected offices. So that's what we have to aspire to, perhaps to clean up the system. But as you say, uh, Mr. Mohan, it's not just, uh, uh, you know, constitutional or governmental autonomy, it is also uh, the will to improve and the rot is too deep, or at least the incompetence is too deep, and we have to change it all. We have the talent. It's an excellent paper written by Pramit, uh, which in just 35 pages encompasses both the history 
and the problems and likely solutions. Uh, I think uh, this can only whet your appetite uh, to read uh, an excellent paper and come up with solutions. Uh, that's my request to India's Society of Statisticians. Wrap up on this edition of Indianomics. Thank you for watching.